Hello everybody and welcome back to another Ice Spire exploit video and boy oh boy do I have a good one for you guys today. So it was brought to my attention by a viewer that I've been going about doing these exploits all wrong. In fact there are a lot more shenanigans that I can get up to by simply removing provinces from Iron Man games, by tagging into the Observer in a normal game and annexing provinces, and then transferring those empty provinces to an Iron Man game. This would give Siberian Frontiers an amazing advantage, especially when I use the exploit to give Siberian Frontiers to the bigger nations in the game like Spain, Austria, or France. But that's not exactly where my mind went when I learned of this new information. I remembered a previous video I made where it added all of Africa, Europe, and Asia to a custom nation. And this got me thinking. Could I hypothetically remove all colonized provinces in the game and do a world conquest with any country on day one? Well, the answer to that one, my friends, is yes. Yes, I can. To do this, I had to do a bunch of testing to figure out two main things. First, was it possible to do the normal to Iron Man province exploits when the custom nation exceeds the 800 point cap? And second, was it possible to do the normal to Iron Man province transfer exploits using multiple custom nations simultaneously? When I figured out that yes, indeed, these were possible, I got to work on my plan. First, I would need to remove every tag from the game in a normal game save file. The first step to this is to make sure that you have your custom set up to 800 allowable custom nation points and custom nations allowed in normal game saves turned on. If they're not on, you'll have to start from the scratch when you realize you've skipped this step after integrating the world, which takes a significant amount of time, so make sure you do this step. I hopped into a normal game and hit the tilde key and typed in debug underscore mode. This enables the inspection box when hovering over a province, which lets you see the country's special three-letter identification tag. The next step is to hop into observer mode, so I typed in observe. From here you can use the annex or integrate commands to integrate the entire world country by country using the three-letter identification tags. This took quite a long time to complete, but I was finished before long, and now that I have my template of the entire world being empty, it's time to begin the custom nation shenanigans. So we have to start with our custom nations in the new world because custom nations can only be so close to one another and can have only provinces that are within the colonial range of their capital province. This means we'll have to use multiple custom nations in order to cover the whole world effectively. Technically we don't need to cover the whole world, but just the provinces occupied by existing nations. But to be safe, either use this map from the wiki or just select every province. I've linked the map down below in the description. So we're going to be creating six custom nations, and the first five will be below the 800 point limit, with the first beginning in South America. Select Panama as your capital province and work your way south. Custom nations need at least one province separating each other, so make sure that your capital is adjacent to a typically uncolonized province. When finished, hit done and begin making your second nation in Mexico. Then head up to North America and create a custom nation there, and then another one in Iceland. For your fifth custom nation, create it in the Moluccas and the Philippines and select these provinces. These are the only provinces that your final custom nation will not be able to reach due to colonial range issues. And when you're ready, create your final custom nation in Constantinople and begin selecting every province in the rest of the world. Be absolutely sure not to miss a single province or you'll have to do this all over again. I'm looking at you so. Also keep in mind that after a while, when you have most of the world within your Constantinople custom nation, when you reselect a province that you already have selected, the game will kind of freeze and leg out for a few minutes before unselecting the province. So be extra careful not to select a province twice, otherwise you're going to waste a lot more time doing this step of the process. Also be sure not to select the provinces of the country you wish to play as, or you'll have to sit and wait again, which is no fun. Now that you have the whole world under your six custom nations, the exploit begins. Follow these steps very carefully as the game can crash and ruin in half an hour of progress or more. So press shift and right click any button on the UI. I usually select the badge in the top right corner and select the button that appears. When you press it, you'll be teleported back to the single player menu and your custom nations will be absent from the map. Don't worry, they still exist. Now navigate on over to your save files and select your empty normal game. A window will pop up saying that this will delete your custom nations. Hit cancel. 
Now select any Iron Man save file. The same window will pop up again and select cancel for a second time. And now comes the trickier part, but the most satisfying. We're going to be creating a set of custom nations in uncolonized provinces. Cancel out of the two windows in the center of the screen and you'll see the custom nation button in the bottom right has reappeared. Click it and select add from the options. Now select an uncolonized province anywhere, I usually select Tura in Siberia. And you'll see that the second you select this uncolonized province that the provinces from your first custom nation you created, being in South America for me, have disappeared from the map. Now press done and create a second custom nation in a new uncolonized province. And you'll see that the second custom nation you created's provinces have disappeared. Hit done and we're going to be doing this a few more times until all of the provinces have disappeared from the map, apart from the nation you're selecting to play, this time being Ryuku. Once you've reached this point, delete all of the custom nations that you have created just now in the uncolonized provinces by hitting the custom nation button several times, selecting modify, and then hitting delete. Once there are no more custom nations to delete, you're ready to begin. Simply select Ryuku, Choose Iron Man mode. Create your save name. And load in. When you're loaded into the game, make sure not to close out of the center menu just yet, as this will crash your game. If you do close out, simply relaunch the game and click continue, and you'll be good to go. All you have to do from here is wait one day and you'll get the World Conqueror, One Faith, the Three Mountains, and the Regs and Riches achievements immediately. Now congratulations, you've broken the game and you've gotten one of the hardest achievements to get in EU4. This exploit or similar exploits mentioned in this video can be used to get the majority of achievements in EU4 and I'll be doing some guides on how to do each and every one of those as I do them. So stay tuned and subscribe if you want to see more EU4 exploit content just like this. If you want to see more EU4 exploit videos, I have a complete guide that I've linked at the end of this video that has the majority of the custom nation exploits that I've featured in this video, plus some more that I haven't covered here. All of these exploits should be working in the patch 1.29.6, the current patch, and I suspect that they will be working in 1.30 as well, but that is yet to be determined. With that being said, everybody, thank you all for watching, and give a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you next time.